Good morning. Let's try that one more time. Good morning. We're making progress. It is a good morning. We're all above ground, each of us with another opportunity to excel and uh, in a position to be very grateful for this nation. Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Ash Carter. Secretary of the Army, Mr. Eric Fanning. Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General Allen. Representative of all those who do it, Daly. Sergeant Major of the Army, Daniel Daly. Members of Congress, Medal of Honor recipients here, distinguished guests, all families, for that is the core of this nation. And friends, and I include in that category everyone, for as it has been said, a, a, uh, A stranger is only a friend I have not met. Thank you for the invitation to join with you here today. I take this opportunity to focus on those who have served this nation and that mission on 15 May of 67. for which the Medal of Honor was awarded yesterday. It is fitting that we acknowledge and share the honor with the 74 helicopter crew members who were involved in the total mission on that date. It belongs to them. With their deep regard for their fellow soldiers, minimize the losses on that day. However, I first take this opportunity to acknowledge and extend my appreciation for the many who have been involved in bringing this Medal of Honor to the forefront. Some of whom are Bill Volano, who's been mentioned before, who back in January of 2012 initiated action to upgrade the, the Distinguished Service Cross to the Medal of Honor through then Representative John Dingell's office. Representatives John Dingell and Debbie Dingell, Michigan's 12th District, and they were the congressional sponsors. Debbie ran the halls of Congress to get the necessary waiver which was required for the five-year restriction. Sharon Vest Prima with the Dearborn office of Debbie Dingell, who spent endless hours ensuring that this action was completed. My friend of some 54 years, <clears throat> Major General Marvin Back, retired. General Back, back in the 50s, late 50s, was my detail sergeant in a reserve unit in Lansing, Michigan. <clears throat> he, uh, he is here with us today. And those comrades here today who were directly involved in that action some 49 years ago. And to my son, Mike, who with the aid of the internet was able to find many of those who were directly involved that day and reconstruct the mission as executed. Thank you for, <clears throat> thank you for this honor to join 
those many who have gone before me in the hall of heroes, two of whom <clears throat> were, are Master Sergeant Roy Benavides and Major Bill Adams. I knew them both. On 15 May 1967, some of this you have heard already, uh, the, big, the mission began about 0930 hours. During four lifts, some 160 troops were inserted into that LZ. It lasted well into the evening hours, at which time the battalion commander requested emergency extraction of what remained, was, which was 44 men. That was successful. But what will remain of utmost importance above all else is those names do not appear on the wall down the street. Each crew member of those helicopters did their duty and then some. Together that day, the values and bond that each soldier understands. We will not leave any soldier behind. The award can only be worn by one person. However, it represents the collective heroism and sacrifice of all those men who were involved in that operation on that day in the Song Tre Khao Valley. There were two other men who were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for that action that day. Leon Wessel, a forward observer, field artillery. Lonnie Butts, a Tiger Force medic. Unfortunately, Lonnie Butts lost his life in the service to our country and his fellow soldiers that day. Today we have a few of those who served directly that day in the battle. They, however, represent the entire group of soldiers. Don Long and Ron Roy, who between lifts in the, into that LZ, brought ammunition in for resupply. One such trip, they took a mortar round on the mast of the helicopter, bad scene. They exited that aircraft in great haste. Don Long received a small arms round in his ankle all four joined the infantry, Don Long back to his basic branch with only a 38 revolver at his side. Not much competition for a battalion size of North Vietnamese. Matt McGuire was the gunship lead. In spite of the damage to each of his helicopters, Matt was always there with team. He, <clears throat> at the end of the day, there were not, we had nine helicopter gunships in that platoon, but only one was flyable. Larry McQuaid and many other pilots continued to fly aircraft, which probably should have been grounded. But it was, they re <clears throat> remained committed to the welfare of our troops trapped in that battle. John Osborne, he was crew chief on 052, the last helicopter we had that was flyable in the 176th for the extraction of the remaining 44 men. During that mission, he took a round, or a, a shrapnel round in the knee. Subsequently, he refused to accept 
a Purple Heart he regarded as nothing. Ray Sechrist. Unfortunately, Ray is unable to be with us here today. Um, medical reasons, he's unable. I have communicated with him in recent times, but he felt he was not capable. And my son went to see him to see if there was any possibility and decided that Ray was right. Ray was my co-pilot and had been for some time at the beginning of the formation of the 176th. He was the only crew member who went in and out of that LZ all six times. Ray was a superb pilot. He was a flight standardization instructor pilot for the unit. His courage and determination was unwavering throughout that mission. He had volunteered to go back out there with me after we'd already gone through one helicopter and <clears throat> against what flight operations had assembled with uh, one of the pilots who normally flew that aircraft, Ray insisted that he go instead, which of course, as many of you would realize, was a great asset. I didn't have to brief him on anything because he knew the situation as well as I did. Roland Scheck was over here. He was my door gunner, had been from day one at Fort Benning, Georgia. When he, <clears throat> Roland is a rather unique person in, in that he was a German national, gone to Canada, joined the militia in Canada with the expectation of going to Vietnam. Learning that they were not going to Vietnam, he came across the border at Detroit and joined the United States Army. I had the good fortune of having him for my gunner. On that day, he took a round in the left knee, which destroyed not only his knee, but the uppermost part of his left leg. The following day, I went down to Quinion Hospital to see Roland. Roland was in the hospital bed with sheet and blanket, looked pretty normal. Rather casual discussion initially. And then Roland, also very casually, said they took my leg off last night. I was uh, uh, short on words. Uh, he went on to say, that's all right, I'll be fine. He is over here today. Roland spent a year at Walter Reed, discharged, married. He and Miriam raised three youngsters. One of them is a Coast Guard officer today. One is an Army officer. A third is in our federal system here in D.C. That's Roland. Richard Ammons and Dewey Smith, two of the last eight that were extracted out of that LZ. Richard Ammons uh, was unable to be here today. We do have Dewey Smith here in front. They were, as I mentioned, the last among the last eight. They had been putting up a last ditch effort to defend the troops as they loaded on board the six helicopters. Their allegiance to the welfare of the other men that day is to me what makes our country 
what it is for all of us to date. Three months ago, and you heard some of this story earlier, three months ago, I had the opportunity to fly the Huey one more time. Sheck and Dewey Smith were there also to fly in the helicopter again. That evening we had a dinner in Finley, gathered with our families, gathered around uh, a restaurant there, and near the conclusion of the dinner, Dewey stood up pointed to all 14 plus family and uh, seated at the table and said, it's all your fault. I <clears throat> immediately denied any responsibility <laughs> for what Dewey may have done after I got him back to a secure area. I have a deep sense of gratitude for the opportunities that each person is afforded by this nation. I also believe that there is no price too great for anyone to pay that contributes to the preservation of our great nation. I have faith in each generation that has come along and will in the future. <clears throat> All the details of this mission on the table, saving the 44 men is the only thing that matters. May God continue to bless this great nation those who have been gone before us in battle, those in harm's way today, and those future generations who may very well have to serve as we have. Thank you, please.